Tech Dark here again. Today we're going to be talking about truly govern self-service. As I travel around the country and I talk to com companies all over the place, it always comes up. We've got a data warehouse or we've got Cloudera and some big data somewhere. We've got a library of QVDs and we want our potential end users to be able to truly serve themselves. They don't want to start with some app that's already pre-built for them. And that's a scary thought, right? Like, how do you let people get to data um, who don't know SQL or who don't know how to connect to Cloudera? How do you put some guardrails on that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through um, what we call on-demand application generation. I'm going to show you a great use case for that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how that works and walk through that story a little bit. So bear with me, this is probably gonna take us about five minutes. We've got this thing um, called a Cloudera Data Explorer that's gonna let us go out and explore this data swamp. We're gonna turn it from a swamp into a lake by letting our end users navigate for themselves through something where they wouldn't technically have the ability to build their own data. So what I've done is I'm just gonna pick a server somewhere this is a just a click mashup. Um, so I can walk down through here. I can see all of the databases that are out on this <clears throat> Cloudera server. I pick a database. As I do, you notice that it's updated my numbers of rows, my values. It's going to show me my list of tables. I could pick a table like products. I get to choose what columns. Maybe I want the product name, the unit price, the unit cost, and who the vendor is, but I could care less about these other columns um, for what I'm going to be doing right now as an end user, right? I simply come through, I apply the tables. It says, hey, here's the data source that you're going to be getting. Here's the tables. Here's the columns. Here's the types of values you have, blah, 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 blah. It goes out and it's actually created an application for me on demand. This app is now built. I can say, yes, I would love to open that app. I come in. Hey, guess what? There's no sheets. But if I go to edit mode, guess what? I've got my fields. Looky there. I've got all of my products. I can begin exploring this stuff and doing this just the way that I always do with any other application, but it's been built for me on the fly. Nobody in IT, nobody in the analytics team had to build anything. It allows the end user to do that. Well, you may be saying to yourself, who really cares? I don't really use Cloudera anyway. Maybe you don't have a big data story. Bear with me for a second so that you understand how this works as I'm laying the groundwork to help you understand how this applies to a much bigger situation. All we did with that workflow for Cloudera is talked to it with a Cloudera connector. We grabbed some metadata and we build an application on the fly with it. Well, we were using a REST connector and we use an application API to build that application. That's what ClickSense is. It's an open API. Don't limit your thinking at this point to just the fact that you can pre-build objects on the screen just like you did with ClickView, right? The whole point here is I can talk to a data source using a connector, use the application and API and build something. Well, why does it have to be a REST API to talk to Cloudera? Can it be a SQL API, SQL connector and talk to an EDW? Can it just be a file connector browsing QVDs and then still go out and build an on-demand app? Let them serve themselves, right? Well, it inevitably comes up We've got other issues. Maybe when I'm getting that metadata, I want to apply security. So maybe that little mashup app that I presented at the beginning where I picked the tables and the columns, it applies section access, doesn't let the end user see tables or columns that they're not supposed to touch. Let me apply that as I'm building that list. Hey, 
as I go out and I've got the secure that I need to do, maybe I have a section access um, block of code that I pre-put into any application that gets built. Think that through. When I build applications, I can build in section access that says Bob is not allowed to see these rows, these tables, the, or these columns. That block of code could be pre-assigned as this application gets generated. It doesn't have to be a completely blank app. It just has to build out the load script on the fly, but that section access could be pre-applied. Hey, maybe as I build that application, if I know what um, data marts I'm choosing data from, I look at my governed dimensions and measures, and I subscribe the app to that governed set of dimensions and measures. So the app that the end user gets has PII and PHI protected, it has section access applied, and it's already subscribed to the governed metrics so that they can get the dimensions and measures that they should have available. That's truly governed self-service. That's truly, truly, truly governed self-service. It's not just data cowboys saying, hey, let's just trust thousands of end users to go grab what it is that they should and ignore what they shouldn't. It's let's build this thing on the fly. The great news is that with six with click sense. Our box is an open API, and with that open API, you can literally accomplish anything. So don't box yourself in at this stage thinking that what you want to do is build an app for people or you're in trouble. You can use these APIs to let the end users build their own app in a self-service fashion, but still apply that governance.